Hey, do you ever notice how results driven we are in America? I mean, everything we do has to be competitive, um, successful, and very results driven. I think as a Christian, that mentality has kind of come into our lives as well, that everything we do, even what we do for God, has to have results. It has to count, it has to matter, it has to be achievable, and something that you can write up in a ministry brochure and say, hey, uh, we're doing it, we're, we're making it happen, and uh, we're worthy of your support. But what do you do when your service to God or your efforts don't necessarily produce the results you're looking for? You know, I was reading recently in the book of Jeremiah, and I was thinking about this because Jeremiah was called of God to do a very unique thing. But what he was called to do was not fun, was not easy, and didn't have great results at all. He was called by God to go and do something that nobody would want to do, to pronounce judgment against the kingdom of Judah where he lived and to tell the king and all those in authority that God is angry because we have forsaken him and judgment is coming. And you know, they didn't say, thank you, Jeremiah. Wow, you're the greatest prophet we've ever seen. You're the best. No, they didn't say that at all. What they said was, you're making up things. You're lying. And the more he preached, the more he prophesied, the more they rejected him. So Jeremiah was called. Jeremiah served God and obeyed God, but he began to be mocked. Eventually he would be punished and put in prison. Um, and in time, he was proved correct. Uh, he was vindicated because what he said came true, but even what he said was not, <laughs> not a positive thing because the enemy, Babylon, did come in and destroy Judah just as he prophesied because the people would not repent. And it's such, a, it's such a reality check to me because I struggle with this. I want to be successful in what I do. I want my ministry to count. I labor in this struggle a lot. And passages like this or the book of Jeremiah have reminded me again that proving myself or proving my ministry uh, in some slick brochure or in some report where I can say, you know, X amount of people have come to Christ and X amount of people have changed their lives and we've helped so many people. I mean, yes, it's important to share the fruit of our work, but it's not easy to validate or to always understand what God is doing through some direct results. We've got to be patient and just trust that as we're being faithful to God, He will make a way, He will accomplish what He wants to do, whether we can see it or whether we can't. So how do I know if my ministry counts? How do I know if I'm being successful or effective? I mean, I have a ministry as a father, I have a ministry as a husband, I have a ministry as a Christian friend, I have a ministry as the president of Standing Together and all the work we try to do here in Utah. And I often ask myself, am I being effective? Am I being successful? How do I know if what I'm doing is making a difference for the kingdom and counting? Well, you know, Albert Einstein said something that I think is very relevant. And this phrase encourages me a lot. Not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. We sometimes suggest that the things that we count or can show in a brochure or a report or a video update uh, proves that our ministry is valid. But there are sometimes intangible things, things that we cannot see that God is doing behind the scenes that are so big and so important. And just because we don't know about them doesn't mean that He's not working and that He's not working through us. And again, this is something relevant for me, maybe not so much for you, but I'm telling you, we all wonder, just like Jeremiah, hey, God called me to do this, I'm doing it, but is it making a difference? Rabbi Zacharias once shared an illustration that I thought was so important because when it comes to we evangelicals, we love to, 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 to say how many people came to know Christ last week at our service or over the last month or over the last year, how many people accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And, and that's wonderful. If we, can, if we can understand that, if we can um, know that for certainty, that's great, you know. But a lot of times that kind of validation is superficial at best because we don't even know. 
But Rabbi Zacharias said that rather than thinking of a single conversion as a moment in time, we have to understand it's a process. And he likened it to like a brick wall that has a hundred individual bricks in it. And the first brick goes down and then the second and then the third, and it goes all the way up from 98 to 99 and then a hundred. And a hundred is that final brick where a person says, I want to accept Jesus Christ. I want to be a Christian. I want to give my life to Jesus. And that person who is in their life sharing the gospel message with them at that moment and leading them to Christ or praying with them to receive Jesus is the person that gets to put that last brick on that brick wall. And that's wonderful. That's incredible. But we all have to realize there were 99 other bricks that were placed to make that wall almost completed when that person came into their life and shared the gospel in any context. Maybe it was a grandmother that prayed for them for years. She might have put a whole bunch of evangelistic bricks together. Maybe it was one experience here or one experience there or one person here or one person there over a long period of time that leads a person to make that decision. Well, then it would be fair of us to say it wasn't the person who placed the last brick on that person's uh, wall of decision, but it was all the people that God used over a period of time to complete that person's wall that led them to that final decision of that 100th brick. And you know what? It just reminds me of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6. He says that Apollos planted and I watered, but God gives the increase. So nobody, nobody saves anybody. Nobody can take credit on a spreadsheet or a flyer or a report that we saved so many people this last month or this last year. That result is for God to claim. That's, that's what God did. That's not what we did. So truly, like Einstein says, not everything that can be counted truly counts. And not everything that counts can be counted. And we have to realize there's a journey and that we're all being faithful to that journey and reminding ourselves that God has called us. He is leading us. We're obedient to Him to the best of our ability and understanding of knowing how to do that and leave the results to God, not to validate ourselves somehow through a report or through some matrix of evidence that says, oh, our ministry is very successful. Sometimes we just have to leave it with God. So we could maybe imagine that Jeremiah the prophet sent out a newsletter to his supporters or to those people that he reported to to validate his ministry with the effectiveness of what he was trying to accomplish. And people would say, uh, Jeremiah, you're a colossal failure because you're preaching and nobody's listening to you. They're mocking you. They're throwing you into prison. Uh, they say that you're nothing but a grumpy old prophet and that you have never have anything positive to say. So on the outskirts or just at the surface, it would look like Jeremiah was a very unsuccessful prophet. Um, there are other ways that we do that in our world today. We look at the big church and we say, oh, that's a successful church. And we see a small, tiny church and we say, oh, that's not a very successful church. But how do we know? How do we know that the big church isn't in some way compromised and that the smaller church is being faithful? And really, is it about the size anyways? Because a church of, of 10,000 can be a very faithful godly church led by faithful godly leaders and a small church can be a faithful church led by faithful godly leaders as well and sometimes the small church can be led by unfaithful people and have lots of sin in it as well as the large church so the numbers by themselves does not prove faithfulness or success it just is something that's a reality in our world and each of those ministries has to kind of determine their success not by their numbers or by their budget or by their facility, but how faithful they're being to God. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about being faithful to God, not faithful to uh, some success matrix or some uh, program that, that we can then validate ourselves. And again, I'm speaking to myself. Mother Teresa said this a long time ago while she was ministering in Calcutta and a United States Senator asked her, how can you keep going? Uh, for one person, for every one person that you help in the streets of Calcutta, thousands others die. You're, you're not alleviating poverty. You're not changing the city. You're doing very little to, to change the poverty. But, but 
but here you go every day caring for one more poor person, one more poor person. How do you, how do you validate yourself? How do you keep going? And Mother Teresa said these wise words. She said, God has not called me to be successful. He's called me to be faithful. So you and I have to do the same thing. It's not about your success or my success. You keep planting, I'll keep watering. I'll keep planting, you keep watering. And let's keep trusting together by being faithful to the thing that God has called us to do, to the fact that God the Holy Spirit will give the success. He will give the increase. He will make the thing happen. Just like Jeremiah, you know, 70 years after Jeremiah left this earth and finished his ministry, Daniel the prophet picked up his scrolls and read his prophecies and declared that Jeremiah was 100% right, that he was a mighty prophet of God, pronouncing judgment to the people of Judah who would not listen to him. And because of that, Daniel is able to instruct and lead and prophesy during his time based upon the faithfulness of Jeremiah. So in the end, Jeremiah was a very successful prophet, even though his success was not defined in the way that you and I would call success. But he was a faithful man of God 